Okay, cast your bread upon the water. Um, interesting that there is a commentary over here. <clears throat> Live not for today alone. We're going to read that as we go through this. But um, I've actually heard people share this before. Way back when I was a kid, I never understood what it meant. Well, let's see if we can get some light shed on this. Ecclesiastes 11, cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. I, uh, he could be talking about... Well, let me not make any suppositions. Let's just read through and see where we end up. Uh, verse 2. Give a serving to seven, and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. I think he's talking about salvation. Or preaching. I think that's what the first one was about too. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall lie. These are these are very interesting things to contemplate. I don't I don't fully understand all of them. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. Hmm. Ah, he who observes the wind will not sow. Uh, observing the wind, he's making excuses to not go and plant the fields. Oh, the weather's bad, oh this, oh that. Making up things. He who regards the clouds will not reap. Oh, it's raining too much. Can't go out in the field. Now, it's making excuses why you can't do what you need to do or do. As you do not know what is the way of the wind or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. Yeah, that one's easy to understand. Because we don't know. We don't, we don't fully understand cell repl replication. In the morning, sow your seed. And in the evening, do not withhold your hand. For you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. That's talking about um, preaching the gospel. Let's talk about preaching truth. In the morning, sow your seed. Start your day. Morning prayer, get out there and start, start spreading the word. And in the evening, do not withhold your hand. Be ready to talk to people. For you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. You don't know which one is going to get the most benefit, so make sure you do all of them. Truly the light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man lives many years and rejoices in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. All that is coming is vanity. He's, uh, let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. Remember the bad times and learn from them. And rejoice in the good times, because that's what they're for. And the running theme of the whole book is <laughs> everything is vanity. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth. You know, I just realized why he says that. All is vanity. All is vanity. We put a lot of faith in our abilities. We put a lot of faith in what we can do, what we know. We put a lot of faith into things of ourselves and not enough faith into God and what he does. That's why he says that's vanity. It just dawned on me after 11 chapters. He says it's vanity because we trust in ourselves. It's vanity. It's all pride. We've got to lay that to the side. We've got to lay that pride down, lay that vanity down, and realize it's not us. It's all Him. Every bit of it, down to the very smallest thing. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these, God will bring you into judgment. Yeah, we know we all, we're all we all going to be judged at some point. All of us. We sing, live your life. Live your life. Go and sow your wild oats. Do your thing. But everybody will be judged by those things. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart. And that's not a negative. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart, if you're saved, <laughs> from your heart and put away evil from your flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. 
Now he's saying because you're going into judgment, get rid of those things. Grow up. Grow up and be an adult and understand that this is for nothing. Some of us do it early in life, some of us do it late in life. Just depends. That's what he's, that's what he's talking about here. All right, let's do the commentary. Live not for today alone. The casting of bread upon the waters is an allusion to the oriental custom of casting rice grains on the fields when they lie submerged beneath the annual inundation of such a river as the Nile. To the inexperienced eye, this was seen the prodigality of waste, but the husbandman knows full well that he will meet his seed again with abundant returns. So it is in life, whether we befriend young boys or girls or distribute tracts or speak kind and loving words or invest our money in philanthropic enterprises, we are casting our bread upon the waters to find it after many days in the world or the next. There you go. So it's what we're sowing, the seeds that we're sowing, the seeds that we're planting. We do what we can do now, like what we're doing here in these ministries, but we won't reap until we get to, to heaven. So that's what that means. Thanks, commentary guy. You helped me with that one. <laughs> but how wise the advice not to always considering not to be always considering the winds or clouds. That was in Ecclesiastes uh, 3, 11, 3 through 4. There is considerable hazard in the life of a farmer. If he waits until all the conditions are favorable, he will never begin. So with our work for God, now that makes sense. We must risk something. Often the word spoken in an apparent out untoward moment will prove to be the word in season. While that spoken under the most favorable conditions will yield no return at all. God gives it a body as and when and how it pleaseth him. So he's saying not to hold back the word you're given. Not to hold back the testimony you're given. Not to hold back the, the revelation that you're given. Get it out there. It may not seem like the right time and it may not be delivered exactly the way people want, but God will use it just like he says here. God gives it a body as and when and how it pleases him. He will bring it to fruition. All we merely need to do is, is act on the promptings of the Spirit and go forward. And God will direct our paths. He will take care of everything. What he's saying in these last two chapters here, and really in, in all of it, is don't rely on yourself, rely on God. Don't rely on what you think. Rely on what he knows and what he's teaching you. That's what he's talking about there. That's what all this is, is referring to. That's pretty cool. All right, we got one more chapter left. Let's knock it out. Love you guys. See you in the next one.